Today is July 6th, year 2015. This is an interview with Shelley Echeverria. Am I pronouncing that right? Echeverria. Echeverria. Mm -hmm. For the transcriber, E-C-H-V-E-R-R-I-A. The interview takes place at the Library of Virginia in Richmond, Virginia. And the interviewer is Betsy Brinson. Today, as you know, we'll be talking about your ancestor, James F. Lipscomb, and we're trying to figure out what the F stands for. How are you related to him? Well, James F. Lipscomb had um, a daughter with his wife, Judith, and her name was Maddie. And one of Maddie's sons was John. And then John had a son named Garland, and Garland is my father. Okay, so it's a great, great relationship there. Yes. So um, we're going to talk primarily about his contributions to Virginia politics in terms of the legislature where he served for eight years. But before we do that, let me ask you, how did your family come to know the history of James? Well, my grandfather, John, grew up in the house with his mother Maddie, which was her father's home. So that was the family home place. The house was still there until it burned in 1972. They, John and his wife Romaine, my grandmother, had built another uh, brick ranch next to the original home um, in the 50s. And my grandmother used to still use the old kitchen from the old house. It was like the summer kitchen, so you didn't get the, the house hot. Mm -hmm. So, um, but in 1972, the house burned, and there was one bedroom and the kitchen and dining room section that remained. After the fire, it, was, it must have been a pretty large house. I was you know, quite young, and I was there when the fire happened because mm -hmm. we grabbed the garden hose and tried to start putting out the fire. Um, and I used to go down there with my grandmother into the old kitchen, which was part of the house that James F. built for his family. So I just grew up knowing, relatives talked about it when I would go. I don't remember my father talking about it so much, but whenever we were visiting grandma and grandpa Lipscomb mm -hmm. in the house, um, the old bedroom had some portraits in it too. Where was the house located? It's in Farmville. Mm -hmm. Virginia, which is in Cumberland County. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as you moved around in your childhood there, were there various artifacts or tools or implements that maybe you wouldn't recognize in your era, but might have been left from an earlier period? Oh, yes. Um, I remember as a child, uh, we would go and play in the bedroom that was left. It had old beds in it and the portraits were on the wall, and we'd go in there messing around. I mean, it was just fascinating to see the old portraits. Um, one of them I did share an image with, uh, the library, so they have it. And then in the kitchen, I remember there were certain areas we couldn't really go in because it wasn't safe you know, at that, that time in the 70s. The floor structure and everything wasn't safe for us to walk around, so we weren't allowed in the dining room. And there was also um, a stairway in the kitchen that went up and we weren't allowed to go in there. So it was full of stuff though. So I can only imagine what was back there. Mm -hmm. But the um, kitchen had the old, older gas stove and everything and the big farm style sinks. Um, I remember the well being out there because there was a farm. He was, mm -hmm. uh, James was a farmer. And there was an old style washing machine um, lots of old things mm -hmm. were around. Mm -hmm. It was, it was just there. I guess right. they just left it there. And then the store was still standing. Then um, he he started a general store. James, I started a general store that my uh, grandparents operated until this. I think it was seventy one when it closed, but everything was still in there. And it was almost like they just locked the door one day and everything was there. And sometimes I would go in there with Grandma Romaine. And we could like look around and you could see where they used to sell things. The old register was still there. We liked to, with the buttons that you would push mm -hmm. and um, where they had the produce. And they had done uh, some butchering and 
she would still go in there to cut meat and had a big freezer in there. I remember the old style Coke machine. I just fascinating. Is, is that property still? No, there? no, it's, it's not there. Down. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And I assume by the time you came along, you had running water and electricity in the house, or maybe not. In the new house, that the new house, we right. always stayed in the new house. It okay. was just going to um, the old house right. for the the cooking. So they had um, gas in there for the stove and. I have grew up with an electric stove, mm -hmm. so I was fascinated with that too, how the pilot light was in there and she'd throw the match. And um, I don't think that they used the well pump, the hand mm -hmm. pump that they mm -hmm. had. I don't think they used that in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. That's didn't neat. think to ask. That's <laughs> neat. How did your family come to know the history of your ancestor, James? I think it was more of oral history, mm -hmm. but I do remember, um, speaking with my grandmother Romaine in her bedroom and she had a drawer of some photos and there was a book which I couldn't remember what it was until later it was Freedom Lawmakers and that was something that um, Eric Fulmer mm -hmm. put together mm -hmm. and um, I read the story a little a short little bi biography and it had his photograph in there so that's so through his um, granddaughter-in-law, I, I mm -hmm. started to learn more. So he's actually named in Eric Foner's book? Yes. Oh, yes. that's neat. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. neat. So are there stories that have come down to you from other members of the family about his experiences in the legislature? I haven't really heard much about that through the family. Um, and one, another cousin has done a lot of research through um, Ancestry.com and genealogy um, websites and looking through census, etc. But from his affiliation with the Radical Republican Party, mm -hmm. that just tells us a lot about mm -hmm. what he was for. And um, I think that his, whatever it was that drew him to public service was passed down because I remember my grandfather, John, he was involved in the community. He was um, very involved on the, like the welfare board and with elections in the community and things like that. And my grandparents had a, a big heart for the disenfranchised people in the community. Mm -hmm. They always wanted to help and to serve mm -hmm. others, whether it was through the store or through church through being involved in the community. So it just seems to be something that has passed down through the family, but right. I don't have any specific stories right. about, I wish I did, and I, I wish I would have thought about asking right. before. I wonder if you know if James had any particular heroes himself or mentors or people who inspired him that he might have read about? Um, he, he was a driver for um, a wealthy man in Richmond. And through talking with uh, cousins and trying to put the family history together, it makes sense that he got into politics because he was, um, he was a free black, mm -hmm. he was a mulatto, mm -hmm. and by him working for this man, he would have been around a lot of men of influence at that time. And he would drive back and forth from Richmond to um, Farmville. So um, it took a while in those days. So mm -hmm. he would have had lots of time to have conversations with these people who uh, they had the money and the wealth and they were the powerful people of the right. time. Right. So he learned from listening and participating mm -hmm. to the degree that he was able to. That he was able to right. run for office yeah. and win an election. Right. Well, and as you probably know, that was a somewhat violent era of history, even though the Civil War was over and we had emancipation, there was a lot of backlash against the African Americans who ran for office and whatnot. And I know mm -hmm. from other accounts of other legislators that, you know, there were, there were threats 
there were death threats and there were incidents of violence and it just I don't know that about your ancestor James I wonder if you mm -hmm. or the family has ever talked about that at all I haven't heard any stories of that in that were passed down through the family um, I have heard other stories mm -hmm. of other legislators um, the Lipscombs in Cumberland County in that area went back pretty far and um, the Lipscomb, uh, Lipscomb family, um, they were freed years before by um, a man from Barbados that had a big amount of property. It was a lot of tobacco farming land. Mm -hmm. So after he passed away, he freed all of his slaves and gave them land. So that gave them an advantage that there was some land. Um, land was money and power back mm -hmm. then. So there were generations of tobacco growers. And um, James, James's wife, Judith, her father was Henry C. Lipscomb, and he was a white man, a descendant of people from England that we could trace back. And he, in his will, he acknowledged that he fathered the children with his slave, which was a big deal back then, mm -hmm. because he could have had a lot of backlash in the community. It, I talked to a woman in the Cumberland Library, and it was well known in the community that they lived as husband and wife, even though they couldn't marry back then. And um, James and Judith, were both connected to Henry through different relationships. Mm -hmm. They were cousins somehow. <laughs> so I think that they were respected more in the mm -hmm. community. They had that connection and I think they had a little bit more of a safety net than some other legislators might have had in their communities. Mm -hmm. And it was a farm community. It wasn't like a big city or anything like that. And the Lipscombs were very well known. Okay. So I don't know that they had that, and that's probably okay. why I didn't hear any stories of okay. that. Um, did James have any particular issues that he was interested to work on and support in the legislature? Well, part of him being in the, the radical Republican part of the Republican Party, mm -hmm. they were very interested in civil rights. Um, after the, the Civil War, they wanted to make sure that these new free black people who had been slaves would have rights to um, be able to work, to have property. They wanted them to grow up in a, a safe community because as you said, there was a lot of right. violence going on in that time. Right, to vote. Yes, And yes. to be educated. Yes. And I, I think he was involved in issues around creating a public school system, mm -hmm. which at that period kind of got tangled up there with others who wanted to use the money instead and pay off the $45 million state debt. So there must have been some real mm -hmm. negotiation that even as a radical Republican, he would have been involved in. Mm -hmm. I didn't any, hear any stories of that, so I can't okay. do more. I would like to find out more right. about what was going on then. Right. But then, my again, my grandfather, John, he was involved with the school board, and his granddaughter, my cousin, was one of the first students to integrate the schools in Farmville then. Oh. Yes. And that would have been what era? That, that was in the late 60s. So this is all the yes. Prince Edward, Prince Edward massive yes. resistance story yes. piece. And now, whatnot. my father Garland could not. They closed the schools there mm -hmm. when he was right. school age, and he told me about having to drive in the car with the teacher to the next county to go to school because they decided to close the schools rather than integrate. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a big, that's a very important piece of Virginia history. So you, you have come down over the years with your family in mm -hmm. terms of rich stories there. Mm -hmm. But um, what do you think your ancestor James contributed during his tenure in the General Assembly? 
I wish I knew specifics that I could tell you, but I think just the fact of where he came from, um, being, as they called, mulatto at that time, and being free, um, having education, being literate at that time was a big deal. Mm -hmm. That he was able to go to Richmond and represent the people in his community that didn't have a voice before. Then he could speak for them mm -hmm. and just you know, who he was surrounding himself with in the time that he was there. He was there to make Virginia better for all Virginians. Mm -hmm. When I talked with you on the phone last week, Shelley, you told me that you have an eight-year-old and an 11-year-old girl mm -hmm. and that they were very excited about this trip and meeting the family and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. and as I listened to you talk about um, talking about the Morgan family, talking about the Lipscomb family, what, what do you think this is all going to mean to your children and are there other children coming along? Mm -hmm in the larger family to know some of this history, mm. both that you all have gathered and researchers from the Library of Virginia and the, the Martin Luther King Commission have compiled and whatnot. What's that going to mean, do you think, for future generations? Well, I'm hoping that one thing, the fact that we're working on this now and collecting all the information, they're going to know where they came from. They're going to be able to trace their family back for generations. And some children don't even know who their father or their mother is. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a rich history to pass on. Um, the mixture of our, our family heritage. I mean, this is really the American story. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the melting pot, our family was the pot mm -hmm. that melted long ago. Um, so we were crossing those lines of segregation for generations. Um, and also that they see that they had ancestors that cared about their community, that um, they were willing to be public servants, um, that they were willing to work for rights for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I hope that they're proud of that and they take it from there and they become involved in their community in the future. Mm -hmm. And also, you have to know your history so you don't repeat the same mistakes. And that's an important legacy. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you think is important to add to this interview? Hmm. I'm not sure how to answer that. Um, we did submit information so that if anyone's watching this later and they want to know more, um, there's specifics about the genealogy that they could look at. Um, and I don't know how much more into the future people may be looking at this. They're going to have um, pictures of the descendants that are here, so that would be available. And I'm just really proud to be a part of the family, a part of the, the legacy of um, people who were willing to stand up to do what's right. Mm -hmm. and so Thank I hope you. that others will do the same. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.